You know those delicious chicken strips that are deep fried that you can get at so many restaurants? Well, guess what? You can make them right at home in your air fryer. Do you see that? And that, and that, that means crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. Let me show you how to make them. They're so quick and easy. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today's recipe is for homemade air fryer fried chicken strips. They are amazingly delicious. They're a wonderful make ahead and freeze, pull out and, and quickly air fry to eat for a snack, lunch, dinner, feed the kids, whatever you wanna do with them. All right, so let's get right into it. First thing I have here, is one cup of plain breadcrumbs and one teaspoon of fine grind sea salt. Now that's all I'm gonna put in my breading mixture. You can add different things, garlic powder, onion powder, uh, smoked uh, paprika, you could add in, if you want a little spice, you can add in some cayenne or some chipotle. So Italian seasoning, if you want them to be you know, Italian uh, flavored. So you can do anything you want with this basic starter breading, but I happen to like them just the way they are when I just use those two ingredients. So that's what I'm going to stick with. All right, now let's get our wet batter done and we'll let that sit for a minute while we uh, slice up our chicken. The wet batter is super easy. It is one egg, one large egg, a half of a cup of cold water, Sorry, my fork here. Just sort of whip that up a little bit just to combine the egg with the water. Doesn't have to be, you know, perfect or anything. Just, just like that's fine. And then we're gonna take, optional of course, but I like this. It does not add spice, but it does add flavor. This is Cholula hot sauce. You could use Frank's, you could use Tabasco, whatever you like. It does not make them spicy though, so don't be afraid and I'm gonna put in about two tablespoons. It really just gives some really nice flavor. Now, if you're absolutely no, no, no hot sauce, then just skip it. You don't need to replace it with anything at all. You could, if you wanna put a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, whatever you want in this mixture, but I just usually leave it with the water, the egg, the Cholula, and then I have three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour that I have sifted. You don't absolutely have to sift the flour, but it is going to incorporate so much easier. And you don't want to like really beat this up, right? Because you don't want to develop the gluten in the flour. What we're going for is a nice light breading that's crunchy as can be. And this is the way you get to that end result. So three quarters of a cup of sifted or not sifted all purpose flour. And we're gonna add in just about a quarter of it at a time, kind of sprinkle it over the top. You may not use all the flour, so you know don't just dump it all in because then you'll end up maybe having to add water and other things to kind of get it to the right consistency. We are going by consistency here and we want the consistency about the same as a pancake batter. Now, we don't wanna really go uh, very aggressively with this, so what I do is I just sort of Fold it over, fold it over. You could do this with a chopstick, but I just do it with my fork. If I sift the flour on top, like I do in my chicken nugget recipe, it actually goes a little bit faster, but I, I my sifter was wet, and you know you can't sift through a wet sifter, so we're doing it a different way today. Once you can no longer see flour on the top, you're gonna still see some lumps, don't worry about that. We will get to those. We're gonna move on to the next. Now see, this is really thin still. That is not what we want. So we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit more. Maybe if I imitate a sifter, that might work a little better. Eh, not really. <laughs> All right, again, just, just go like this to get it incorporated. This is the longest part of the whole process, to be honest with you. Now, 
Now, usually while I'm doing this, I would have my air fryer preheated, but because it is on the loud side, I'm going to wait until after I'm done breading and then I will preheat. But if you guys are making this at home right now, preheat your air fryer on the hottest setting for a full 10 minutes with your cooking surface, you know, whatever you're gonna put the chicken strips on inside the appliance, you want that to get hot too. Now see how we're getting a little bit thicker here? Now we're still not quite there, but we are getting a little bit thicker. So we're just gonna keep going. And I might use it all, it really depends. Sometimes I've only used maybe a half of a cup, sometimes I've used the whole three quarters of a cup, it really just depends. Um, because, you know, sometimes you're heavy-handed with your water, sometimes you're you're not. So that's why I like you to go by consistency more than anything else. Okay, we're getting there. Still not quite. But we're close, so I'm going to leave about two tablespoons in there still. I think this is going to do it. Now, I use chicken breast for this recipe. You can absolutely buy chicken tenders already done if you want to. They're more expensive, and although they are more tender, if they're true chicken tender, because sometimes I don't know that they are. I'll show you what, uh, what I think some of them are sometimes because the chicken tender is a prime part of the chicken breast and it is not attached to any chicken breast that you're gonna get at the grocery store whole. Okay, that is a good consistency. So it's not too thick, it's not too thin, it's going to coat our chicken strips perfectly. So now I can move this down here. All right, so now let's get our chicken ready. I have one and a half pounds of chicken breast, now you could Double this, triple this, quadruple this. Just increase all of your ingredients. We will have a little bit of, in fact, a good amount of the wet batter left. So don't worry about doubling that um, if you're gonna double the recipe. The reason why I is you have a little extra is because you know it's really hard to split an egg in half, right? So I had to go with the whole egg and then the other ingredients worked around that. All right, so I've already trimmed up my chicken breast here. And so what I think sometimes they're selling off as chicken tenders is this strip right here, which is not a chicken tender, but it kind of resembles one. And I usually take that off first and it looks like a chicken tender, but it is not the actual chicken tender that's on a breast. All right. And then I take it, and you can cut them, like you could cut in half if you want little shorter um, strips. So you can cut this any way you want to, okay? It really doesn't make any difference. Obviously, the thicker they are, the longer they're gonna take to cook. I cut strips just like that. You can get between three and four good size chicken strips out of one. I would say these are, uh, these chicken breasts are on the large side. This one's a little bit smaller than the other one, so I may only get three out of this one. All right, let's go ahead and remove that on the back here. There we go. All right, there we go, perfect. All right, once the chicken strips are all cut up, we're gonna go immediately to breading them up. And I'm gonna show you how to do one and then I'm gonna get my air fryer preheated. All right, so bring up your wet batter. You can use your hands, you can use tongs, you can use whatever you're comfortable with. I usually start with a fork. Or my hands, they're already messy anyway. So we're gonna put one chicken strip into the wet batter here and make sure that it gets coated on both sides and there's a good amount on there. Then we can lift it up, let any excess drip off. And then put it into your breading. Now I've also done this with a plastic bag and it does work, but I recommend only putting one chicken 
tender in, oh, they're not really tenders, but chicken strips in at a time into the bag to get them coated. Otherwise you run into trouble with getting the coating all over. All right, so now we can either do this. We can either use our hands and just sort of move the breading over, or sometimes I just shake. Or use another fork. Really, it's completely up to you how you bread them. But you do want to make sure that there is breading all over this. Then another thing that I like to do is let it sit. Maybe flip it over a little bit and let it sit. This is how we're going to get those crunchy pieces that I showed you in the very beginning of the video. It's when that wet batter combines with the dry batter and it kind of forms like a little ball or something on the outside of this uh, breading. And oh my gosh, it's so amazing. I was really impressed the first time I made these. I was like, wow, these are like restaurant quality, which is what I go for in all of my recipes, of course. All right, there we go. So one is done. Carefully lift it out. Look at that. It is beautiful. It is perfect. I want that. I want that. That'll go on to another one. Let's see where that fell off. We want to make sure it's got breading. All right. That's perfect. Now I'm just going to set this over here and finish up. I'm going to preheat my air fryer on broil because I have a broil setting that's 450 degrees. That's the hottest setting on the Ninja Foodie. That's what I like to use. I have the basket inside, which is what I like to use. You can use the crisping plate. You could even use the rack if you want. I just like to use the basket. Um, and we want to have that inside when we preheat. There's broil. And hit the start. 10 minutes is what I want. It's going to take me less time than that to do the rest of these. And then we will get them into the air fryer and I'll let you know exactly how to prepare them for freezing. Okay? All right, perfect. So we are now preheated and I'm going to go ahead and spritz with some avocado oil, spritz the basket. And then let's go ahead and get these guys in here. The amount of chicken strips that you can fit in your air fryer will depend on the size of your air fryer. So I'm not even sure how many I'll get in here, probably around three. I usually only cook two to three at a time. Yeah, I could probably get one more in there if I wanted to, but well, let's see if we get a small one down here. I'm gonna be careful though. I'm gonna have to just pick this up with my hand. Oh, no, that's not a small one. That's a big one. Let's see if I can get this one in. You wanna be careful when you're moving these around. I know, I've gotta wash my hands again. That's that's the story of my life. Um, when you're moving these around before they're, the breading's set, you don't wanna really go in there rough with tongs or anything, or you just pull the breading off and undo everything that you've done. All right, let me go ahead and spritz the tops pretty well here with the oil. This is important. I know a lot of people want to, you know, skip the step of the oil. I mean, you don't have to use that much, but you do want some spritzing of oil for the crunch factor, okay? Otherwise, it's just going to kind of taste like cooked breadcrumbs, okay? It's not going to really have that fried taste. All right, so now we are going to go start, stop. Well, we don't want sear saute, do we? This one throws me off a little bit because the other one I can just switch functions pretty easily, but this one you kind of have to go back to the basics. All right, so we are on an air fry. That's what I want anyway. We're gonna go, oops, I'm sorry. We're gonna go down to 375 and we're gonna take the time to 12 minutes. Usually it takes about 10 minutes, but I like to set 12 on the clock. At about minute five or six, I will flip them and I'll show you how I flip them because I don't use my tongs because the breading's hot but not quite set and you don't wanna pull it off. So I use this little handy dandy thing and we'll flip them and then finish them up. Meantime, let me show you how you can freeze them and have them, you know, kind of a grab and air fry from frozen. Take a tray that will fit in your freezer. It could be a plate. It could be anything you want, okay? And put some parchment on there. Then what you wanna do is spray your parchment, and I'm gonna explain this in a minute. Spray your parchment with some oil. It doesn't have to be a whole lot, but you do wanna spray a little bit. 
And believe me, there's hardly any oil that comes out of this. Like all these spritzes, and I probably have about a teaspoon and a half of oil. So it seems like a lot. I get comments a lot. That's a lot of oil. It actually isn't. All right, now we want to lay our chicken strips down just like that in a single layer. If you wanted to stack them because you want to make a whole bunch, just put another layer of parchment on top and keep going, you know, as much room as you have in your freezer. All right, now spritz the tops here with oil. Okay, this does two things. Number one, when you have oil already on them, you don't have to oil them before you air fry them when you go to cook them from frozen. Number two, the fat in the oil helps reduce ice crystals, so they're gonna stay better longer in the freezer. Because you know, when you get uh, any kind of frozen food, if it, if it gets ice crystals, it just doesn't taste that good. So put your oil on right now. That's what they do in, uh, you know, in the production plants where they make all your favorite frozen foods, all your French fries that you throw into your air fryer and they're super crisp. They are all oiled before they are frozen. So, all right, there we go. Pop this in the freezer. Let them freeze overnight on the tray or at least four to six hours until they become completely frozen. And I have some because we love them. Um, I have some right here that are already frozen. So once they are frozen, then we can throw them into our bag our freezer bag. They will not stick together. And you can grab out one, two, three, four, however many you want. Zip this up, try to get the air out. I'm not doing a really good job of this, but try to get the air out as much as you can and then throw them into the freezer. Then when you're ready, you could just pull them out and you can air fry them from frozen. Now, what I've noticed is surprisingly they don't take that much longer from frozen i would plan on a total of 12 to 15 minutes from frozen but i've noticed at times that they take 10 minutes just exactly the same you can just temp them with a, a instant read thermometer to make sure that the chicken inside has reached a minimum temperature of 165 and then they're good to go and you're definitely going to get them golden brown you can also try to increase your temperature a little bit you can go up to 400 if you want okay to speed the process up but just make sure that they don't start burning on the outside if you see that happening before they're done on the inside lower your heat a little bit okay all right so we still have a few more minutes and then i will flip now try not to open your lid during this time because you want the heat to stay inside your air fryer and not come out in to your room because it's not going to cook your food if it's in your room you want it in the air fryer all right so we've gone six minutes now let's take a peek and see how things are going well they look amazing wow they look so good now what i like to do because i really want to make sure that i don't rip off the breading at this point is put this little flipper, whatever you want to call it, over and flip them over. Oh my gosh, they almost look done. I make these in the indoor grill at home all the time and I love them. You can fit a little bit more in the XL grill. Oh, I just, I just love these. I mean, they remind me of like just restaurant deep fried uh, chicken strips. And then where you see a little drying here, that's just where the oil didn't get on. So just go ahead and oil. All right, now I wanna go another two minutes and then I'm gonna take an internal temperature. Now I don't want you to worry too much about the temperature getting above 165, but it has to be at least 165 to be safe to eat. So sometimes when I get them to the crispiness that I want, the chicken strip is actually, the chicken itself is actually up in the 180s. But I don't want you to worry about it. I don't want you to think that you've ruined it because trust me, I did the first time I thought, oh no, I just ruined them. They're 180, they're gonna be horrible and dry. And guess what? They were not, they were so incredibly moist. And that's because that breading locks in all of the juices from the chicken. We're not losing it. So they're just staying in there and oh my gosh, it's so delicious. So don't worry about overcooking the chicken, like up into the 180s. I wouldn't get up into the 200s or you might have an issue, but into the 180s if you need to go longer for the perfect crisp that you like, okay? 
All right, so it's been a total of 10 minutes. That is usually what it takes to cook them the way I like them, okay? Now, you may not like the breading as crunchy. You may want it a little more crunchy. You know, it's up to you. But at this point, they're really golden brown, but they are not burnt, and that's super important, okay? If you go up on your temperature to about uh, 400, uh, what I found is that they start to burn a little bit, so we don't want that. All right. If you let them sit in your air fryer, like you could let them sit right in there if you wanted to, or pull the basket out and let them sit right there, then when you go to get them out, you can get tongs. If you're going to do it right away like I am, use a little turner because this breading is still warm. Well, it's hot. It's really hot. <laughs> And it could start to come off. Like I noticed right here on this one, looks like a little bit started to come off, but that's okay. All right, so let's see what we got. Yeah, we're at 188, 190. So we are definitely done. We were probably done at the six minute mark, believe it or not, as far as the chicken goes. But they just weren't crispy enough for me. All right. I mean, you can hear them in there. <laughs> I just love this. Look at that. Oh. I'm I'm so excited when I can get air fryer food to be like as good as I can get in a restaurant and that's exactly what these are. Simply amazing. And then I'm going to show you my like 5 minute salad that I whip up when I want to eat these with a spectacular honey mustard dressing that I absolutely adore. All right, there we go friends. Oh my gosh, we can turn this off. We are all done. Now, I put these on a cooling rack. That is important if you're not going to serve them right away. And I encourage you not to serve them right away. Because what happens is when you put them on a cooling rack and you let, allow the air to circulate around, they're going to crisp up even more. And the breading's going to stay on better. And you're just going to have a better eating experience. So let them rest for about three to five minutes on a cooling rack before you serve them. And they're going to be spectacular. So while those are resting, let me grab the ingredients for my salad. I'm going to show you how super easy it is to make. All right. So my salad, like it doesn't get any easier than this. I have about a cup of baby spinach and one slice of red onion that I just sort of roughly chopped. That's my salad and it's delicious. And then we top it with one of our crispy chicken strips and a delicious homemade honey mustard dressing. Now this can serve as a dipping sauce, okay? You can even thicken it up more, which I go into in my recipe for this, but I like to use it as a dressing on this salad. I'll definitely link to this recipe below in the video description. And there is a quick and easy lunch, and it tastes so amazing. All right, let's get into this chicken. Did you hear that? I get so excited, I know. Like that, that had a crunch of deep fried. It did. Oh, it's nice and hot. Look at, oh gosh, I love these. Mmm. Oh, my goodness. I'm still crunching. Fantastic. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love them. And I think the plain breading works great when you're gonna do something like a salad. Now, another thing you can do is make up your favorite buffalo sauce, use that as a dip or toss them in buffalo sauce, or you can make chicken nuggets, which I have a recipe on my website for as well, which is just like a smaller version of these. Different heat though and temperature, so check that out if you wanna make chicken nuggets. Oh my gosh, so, so amazing. Yeah, you, know, you could do all kinds of things with the salad too. I mean, you could put tomatoes in it. You could do anything you want. It's amazing though. I hope you enjoy these.